He's always been a priest's priest, but more importantly, he's been a, uh, a human being to human beings and rich and poor alike. All right. Tonight, a local legend who spent decades helping countless homeless San Diegans has died. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. Kirsten has the night off. Father Joe Carroll passed away early this morning. The iconic priest served as president and CEO of the St. Vincent de Paul Village from 1982 all the way up until his retirement in 2011. The nonprofit was renamed Father Joe's Villages in his honor back in 2015. News 8's Ariana Cohen's joins us now with more on Father Joe's legacy. Yes, Steve, Father Joe had a knack for fundraising. He even had a gift of gab. His colleagues tell me that he once convinced a cop who was giving him a speeding ticket to instead donate to the homeless. And this is just one of many examples of how he's helped the San Diego homeless community for many years now. Father Joe Carroll, known as the Hustler Priest. It was a common joke among donors and friends that they should hide their wallets and watches in, in, the, in his presence. Devoted 40 years of his life to helping the homeless. Let the message be there are people on the streets of San Diego. When the rain comes this week and the cold comes. He raised tens of millions of dollars. I've always said this, Joe will always be in our heart and in our soul and in our wallets. <laughs> He was born in the Bronx in 1940. He was the fourth of eight children born to Irish Catholic immigrant parents. Joe moved to Southern California in 1963, where he entered the seminary. He struggled with diabetes, which led to amputations of both feet in recent years. He died at 80 years old in East Village. Father Joe's Villages established in 1950 to serve San Diego's homeless population. The site is a home to more than 2,000 people nightly. His longtime staff and representatives joined together Sunday virtually. More importantly, he's been a, uh, a human being to human beings and rich and poor alike. San Diego Bishop Robert McElroy issued a statement Sunday reading in part, quote, the housing network of Father Joe's villages is a testimony to his life's work. But an even deeper testimony lies in the fact that Father Joe taught so many of us in San Diego to see the homeless as truly our neighbors. And Tamara Kohler, CEO of the Regional Task Force on the Homeless, also released a statement reading in part, quote, his unrelenting determination coupled with his charm and compassion leave an unmatched legacy. San Diego has lost one of its legends and we have lost one of our best friends, but his legend lives on. A private funeral mass will be held with close friends and family, and the public is invited to bring flowers right here at 15th and 16th Streets near Imperial Avenue at Father Joe's Villages. If you want to share your memories, you can use the hashtag Father Joe Legacy. Steve. A fast attack from the air and the ground knocked out a brush fire this morning in the East County. Started around 11 in Lakeside off Wild Kick Canyon Road, just two miles north of Barona Casino. Now, Cal Fire says the crews stopped the forward progress in about 40 minutes, burned less than eight acres. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Meanwhile, off Interstate 8 and Descanso, fire crews still working to fully contain the road fire that brought traffic to a standstill yesterday. According to the CHP, it all started when a semi tanker fire spread into some brush there, took off then, burned about 70 acres, and at last update was just 5% contained. Over in Del Zura, Cal Fire says the Marn fire is now 40% contained, started around 6 last night along Marn Valley Road. New mapping shows that fire burned about 52 acres. You might remember previous reports put it at 70, so it has dropped a bit. A couple of homes were evacuated, but those orders were lifted a short time later. And those fires, along with the hot temperatures out east, definitely making for a difficult firefight. The good news, crews were able to act quickly out there. The big question, though, what kind of conditions can we expect as we head into the week? Let's check in with meteorologist, meteorologist Sean Stiles, who joins us now with the first look at your microclimate forecast. And yeah. Sean, I was driving down <laughs> from Northern California yeah. Back to San Diego, stopped in Bakersfield for no. uh, some gas, 100 and I think it was 18 degrees. Uh, yeah, there has been, I'll tell you what, on Friday, uh, the Death Valley area, Furnace, uh, what is it, Furnace Springs, 
130 degrees, breaking their record of 129. We had records today. Borrego 117, 116, the record back in 2012 in Palm Springs. 119, 119, the record that should be flipped 120, 119 is the old record. As far as uh, what we're expecting here, heat advisory continues along the foothills and into the mountains, the excessive heat warning across the desert. But it's just not a desert thing because once you look at the big picture, look at most of California. Steve, where you were coming down through the San Joaquin Valley and all the way out to the coastal mountains and back into the Sierra Nevada, we're talking about excessive heat warning, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, now up into Oregon and looking at the forecast temperatures tomorrow, things start to back off a little bit, a little bit, but still upper 80s to low 90s out in the desert, 113. It looks like Tuesday we see a pretty significant drop in temperatures and everyone starts to cool down, although the coast has been fantastic. I'll have your eight day microclimate forecast in just a bit. San Diego Pride kicked off this weekend, and while there aren't the traditional celebrations like the Pride Parade, organizers did come up with some alternatives to still bring thousands together. Here's News 8's Allison Royal with more. You can see the iconic, colorful flags decorating the San Diego skies for as far as the eye can see. When I turned around when we were marching and it was just like a sea of people and I got a little choked up because it was just so beautiful that everyone is able to be out here and be free and be who they are. And hear the cheers from down the street. That's because after last year's online events, San Diego Pride is back in person. It gave us an opportunity to um, to get people together and people are so hungry for that. Instead of the traditional parade, organizers got their wheels turning and organized this march from Balboa Park to the Hillcrest Pride flag on Sunday. And there's this thing about pride that is just being with your people, around your people, and there's this kind of unbridled joy and freedom that comes with it. And while it is a celebration for people of all ages, that does not necessarily mean it has to be a party. Yeah. What's it like being sober at Pride? Uh, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> what she said. <laughs> a lot of people like going out drinking and think yes. that's what it's all about, but it's not. You you can have Pride without, without any sort of drinking. Yeah. Sunday was a chance to wrap your arms around those you love. I'm gonna tear up. Even mom. It was just being so hard. I had a lot of rough times trying to figure who out, figure out who I was. So seeing that I can finally come out and like I know what I am now, and then my parents coming out with me, it's like just the extra support. It's really nice. It's really nice. And as cliche as it may sound, a day to be yourself. Make America queer again. Allison Royal, News 8. Powerful day, Allison. Thank you. Well, the celebration is on tonight in the South Bay. A local high school baseball practice, pro, prospect, I'm so excited I can't even say the word, was selected early in tonight's MLB draft. Marcelo Mayer of Eastlake was the fourth pick. He's heading now to the Boston Red Sox. Steve Quist in for John tonight. Joins us now with more on this very talented shortstop. So awesome, Steve. I love these types of stories, right? This young man, should he sign, is going to be a millionaire shortly, right? And he was just probably couldn't even afford to go to McDonald's a couple of days ago, right, without mom and dad helping him. Well, for a time, it appeared that Eastlake High School had done it again. Almost every one of the mock drafts had East Lake Titan shortstop Marcelo Meyer going number one overall in the Major League Baseball draft, much like Adrian Gonzalez did out of the same high school 21 years ago. However, the Pittsburgh Pirates threw a big curveball. They went with the college catcher as the overall number one pick, leaving Meyer in limbo until the Boston Red Sox took the teenage shortstop with the fourth overall pick. As Steve had mentioned, Meyer heard the news today at a gathering with friends and family at a sports bar in the South. County out of the top three high school shortstops expected to go in the first round nationally. Meyer turned out to be the top 
prep shortstop taken. Now he was hoping to join this select company, which is San Diego area high schoolers taken first overall. You might recall LCC's Mickey Moniak went number one back in 2016, just five years ago. You had Cathedral's Brady Aiken, a pitcher back in 2014. Dare we mention the Matt Bush debacle with the Padres in 2004. And then of course there's former Padre Adrian Gonzalez, who was the first to go number one in 2000, also out of East Lake High School. And of course, Steven Strasburg, you can kind of put him on the list, right? He went to SDSU out of West Hills High School in Santee before going first overall in the 2009 draft and then became a World Series MVP. And of course, coming up later in sports, Steve, we're going to hear from Marcelo coming up later. Man, good, good day, though. What is in the water down there in Chula Vista? Send your kid there. If, that's, <laughs> if it's not RB High or Poway, you got to send right. him down there. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Yep. Congratulations, Marcelo. That yep. is awesome.